Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about how to build Garuda and also how to play her. And this is going to be a max casting speed build, so we are focusing on using her abilities as opposed to her weapons. Alright, let's get right into it. So this is my mod configuration. You'll see that this build focuses on range, but we also have a good amount of strength and duration. And then we have the Augment here, which turns her fourth ability into a radial AoE instead of a directed AoE. This will help us kill stuff all around us as opposed to just in front of us. And then as you see here, I also have casting speed mods. As for the Arcanes, this one helps us heal when we cast abilities, because she can cast her third ability to gain energy back, but this costs health. And then when you cast abilities, you can heal. So it's like a cycle of free energy, basically. And this one is just for some extra strength, help you do more damage. Also, while this video is not about using her talons, I know some of you are going to be wondering, how do you build her talons? So if you are wondering, then Real quick, here is how I would build the Talons. You have this to basically have a permanent source of combo gain. This helps you crit more as well as gain critical damage. This is really important for those slash procs to boost the damage of those. And then you have Viral. The combo mods to benefit from your 12 times combo that is being sustained by this. And then this gives you a little more critical chance for combo meter. But I wouldn't recommend using the talents because as you can see here, there is no melee arcane slot. It's better to use something like the dual electric carrying Karnon, it's just way stronger. You have these evolutions and then you even have the melee influence. And some of you have asked for my dual Acre and Karnon build before on my other videos like the Caliban guide, so here you go. Alright, now let's complete the build. So we still need to put on these five yellow shards to reach the maxed cast speed possible. All right, now that's done, and for the last piece of our build, we are going to subsume Breach Surge. And what we're going to overwrite is Blood Altar. So I'm going to show you in a bit, but basically our playstyle is going to be to spam Breach Surge as well as her Seeking Talons ability. For companions, you can use either the Panzer Volpophila. This will inflict viral on the enemies, further boosting your damage from your abilities. Or you can use the Nautilus. And what this one does is instead of boosting the damage directly, it groups enemies, which basically stuns them and makes them close together so your breach surges can be more effective. So both are really good. If you want just damage, then go for the Panzer. If you want some crowd control as well as easier clustering, then go for the Nautilus. But no, can't go wrong with either one. Alright, let's go into the Simulacrum first and give you a controlled demonstration of the synergy between Wisp's Research and her fourth ability. Alright, we're in the Simulacrum. Now I'm going to show you how to play Max Casting Speed Garuda. So we have all the casting speed mods as well as five tall forge casting speed shards. And then we're going to enter operator mode for the last 50% casting speed. Now we're going to cast her fourth ability, cast breach surge. And this is going to create a chain reaction of breaches that also inflict slash procs thanks to her fourth ability. And as you can see, they get multiply stronger until the enemies just die. It starts out small, but the damage gets bigger and bigger. 
until the enemies all tick out and die. As you can see, no weapons needed. It's just a really strong ability based build. Okay, we're in a conjunction survival. Let's activate the console. I'm gonna double tap bloodletting to fill up my energy meter. And now we're gonna cast the fourth ability. As you can see, thanks to our king, we've healed up to full instantly. So energy is absolutely no problem in this build. You'll also notice that casting our fourth ability gives us a temporary community window, which is really useful if your shield breaks. Okay, so it works well in Conjunction of Battle. Let's try it on Infested as well. I also made a slight change to the build. I've added the mod Kavat's Grace that prevents hard falls because, as you'll see earlier in the clip, the when I fell after casting the fourth ability, I was stunned temporarily. So hopefully, this helps a bit to improve the smoothness in the build. If you want to get Kavat's Grace for yourself, then you can get it from one of the secret rooms on the Jupiter map. Or you can buy it from the market for about 40 platinum as of this video. Yeah, as you can see, it's much smoother. If I cast my abilities, I'm no longer getting temporarily stunned when I land. So now I can just continually cast, and then when my health or my energy meter gets low, I just double tap it to refill out the full. And the best part is, because of the arcane, I can just heal immediately with one cast of any ability. So there's really no risk. You can just keep using bloodletting as much as you want. Alright, I think I showed it off pretty well. That's it for this video. If you don't like spam abilities, watch out. There will be another video where I make your weapons both Garuda, where we will focus on using weapons instead of her ability spam. Alright, see you next time.